Hallelujah. How's everybody doing this morning? Y'all doing well this morning? Yeah. Hallelujah. God is good. Well, welcome to the house of God this morning. And, and I know, uh, is Joseph in here yet? I think they're on the, making their way in here. Hey, Ronnie, how you doing, man? They're making their way in. We just sent out a team today from the church and, and helping another ministry, which is Ronnie Gonzalez, which is Faith, Hope, and Love. And, and so we've got a team of people. We're sending out about 38, 40 people that are going to be going out today and ministering to the homeless. And, and uh, we had a team of people over here yesterday cooking, cooking food for 300 people. So I got it here last night. It smelled like, uh, it smelled like stuffing or dressing or relleno, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, so anyway, it was awesome. Amen. I'm excited about this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, Jason. Hey, Sarah. So if you're visiting and you're wondering why the, the church is half empty, they're, they're going to be down, <laughs> down off Lancaster. Amen. Keep it coming. Amen. And if you want to go, you're more than welcome to go with them as well. Just make sure you bring your, you brought your, you brought your coat today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Man, God is so good. And, and Joseph, Joseph is over our evangelism, uh, the stuff that we do at the church. So Joseph, you can come on the platform so everyone can see you. Joseph, Pastor Joseph oh. come up here oh, okay, sorry. so they can see you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Justin. Am I on? Okay, I'm on. Okay. Thank you, Pastor Justin. Okay. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. It is the desire of our pastors, Pastor Justin and Pastor Annette, that we make an impact on the community. It's his desire that we send out teams on a regular basis, that we share the love of Jesus, and that we also serve the community. And today we are going out to serve the community. And it's also the vision of Dr. Savell, our founding pastor, Father, that when we do share Jesus, we share him effectively. We share the righteousness of Jesus and the love of Jesus as we're serving, as we're loving, loving one another, showing the love of Christ. That is the vision of our pastors. And Jesus, it's your vision that we be ambassadors, ambassadors of Christ. And as we go out today, as we work with Mr. Gonzalez, as we work with the Patinos, as we go out there and we're under their leadership today, we're going to bring the love of Jesus. We're going to bring the love of the Lord, and we're going to serve the community. And like Pastor Justin spoke last week, for your will. This is your vision, Jesus. We are ambassadors for you, Christ. We are your extension. We are your projection. So, Father, we are bold as lions of Judah. We have your righteousness in us. There's no fear in us. And we are just loving ambassadors of Christ. We take authority over the devil today. I thank you, Father, for the wisdom on how to handle each and every situation as it arrives. I thank you for blessing the pastors. I thank you for blessing Mr. and Mrs. Patino. I thank you for blessing Mr. Gonzalez. I thank you for blessing each individual that came out here today, Father. And we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, just as, uh, as pastors, and I just want to thank you all for, for going out today and being an extension and just loving on people, because that's what it's all about. It's all about people, and, and I, just, I just want to thank you all for taking part in this. There's other things that we'll be doing, doing in the future, and, and they're excited about what God wants to do through us you know, to this community. You know, it's, you know, this is the year of the breaking loose. Well, we know God has loosened our lives so we can loosen someone else's life. Amen. And that's really what sharing the love of Jesus is all about. So give them a hand, give God a hand as they go ahead and go out and, and, uh, and help Ronnie and Patino. So you all dismissed. Thank you, Ronnie. See you, Reuben. As we get this morning, I'm going to go ahead and read a scripture as we begin this morning. In Psalm chapter 145, it says, I lift you high in praise, my God, my King. I'll bless your name into eternity. I'll bless you every day and keep it up from now to eternity. God is magnificent. He can never be praised enough. There are no boundaries to his greatness. Gener after, generation after generation stands in all of your work. Each one tells stories of your mighty acts. Now, just for a moment, just for about 30 seconds, I want you to tell someone else so what God has done in your life. Just for a moment, because it says here, it says each one tells stories of your mighty acts. I want you to take a moment and tell someone of what God has done in your life. Amen? What, what has God done in your life? Tell them. You see, when you talk about God, God manifests himself. God reveals himself. Amen? Verse, verse 5, it says, your beauty and splendor have everyone talking. 
I compose songs on your wonders. Your marvelous doings are headline news. I could write a book of the details of your greatness. The fame of your goodness spreads across the country. Your righteousness is on everyone's lips. God is all mercy and grace. Not quick to anger, he's rich in love. God is good to one and all. Everything he does is suffused with grace. Creation and creatures applaud you, God. Your holy people bless you. They talk about the glories of your rule. They explain over your splendor. Let the world know of your power for good. The lavish splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is a kingdom eternal. You never get voted out of office. God always does what he says and is gracious in everything he does. God gives a hand, hand down to those on their, down, God gives a hand to those down on their luck. Gives a fresh start to those ready to quit. All eyes are on you expecting. You give them their meals on time. Generous to a fault, you lavish your favor on all creatures. Everything God does is right. The trademark on all his work is love. God, God's there listening for all who pray, for all who pray and mean it. He does what's best for those who fear him. Hears them call out and saves them. My mouth is filled with God's praise. Let everything living bless him. Bless his holy name from now to eternity. Hallelujah.
beyond all reason. You gave your life, your all for me. Call me yours forever. I caught in the mercy fallout. Found her, found life, found all I need. You're all I need. The time has come.
we got to show our love. It has to be on display for the world to see. Amen. That means we have to get out of our box. We have to get it out of our little chair diameter. Amen. Sometimes it requires stepping out in the aisles. Sometimes it requires stepping forward at the, at the altar. Lord, Amen. To let it be displayed. Display your love for the Father. Amen. In everything we do. In everything we do, our praise goes out to you, faithful God. Faithful God. You're a faithful God. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our worship. You are worthy of our declaration of your goodness and your mercy for all to see. Glory to God.
let's sing it out. How great, how great you're singing. How great is our God. How amazing is our God. Hallelujah. It says, He appoints them that mourn in Zion, gives them beauty for ashes, oil of joy for mourning. Hallelujah. Praise for a spirit of heaviness, that we might be called trees of righteousness. Hallelujah. You know, a garment of praise. He's given us a garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. Whether you're here or watching by way of the internet, no matter what season you might find yourself in, if you ever feel heavy, I'm telling you, that's when you need to start thanking God. You start praising God in the midst of where you are. And I'm telling you, that heaviness has to lift. That heaviness has to lift because when you welcome God... When you welcome God and you welcome His greatness into the room, or you welcome His greatness into the situation, I'm telling you, your spirit will be lifted. Your spirit will be lifted. And whatever's heavy on you, I'm telling you, He's given you that garment of praise. He's given you. He's given you that garment of praise to, to destroy the work of the enemy. He has given you that garment of praise. When you talk about his goodness and, and you start thanking him for his goodness and you start thanking him for, for, for where, where you're going and where you're headed, I'm telling you, that heaviness has to leave. And I just sense there's some that are watching by way of internet this morning. That there's just a heaviness going on you. Just, just right where you are, where, while you're watching on the internet, just lift your heart to Him. Just, just start thanking Him. Start thanking Him. And I'm telling you, there's going to be a breakthrough that's going to take place in your heart and your mind right now. The presence of God is going to come into the room right where you are, and deliverance is going to take place. Freedom is going to take place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. 
Oh, Father, we just thank you. You are a great God. You are a great God. You are a great God. You're an amazing God. You are a faithful God. Hallelujah. You are a glorious God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are a faithful God. We thank you for your goodness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are thankful for you. We are thankful for you. We're thankful for you. Hallelujah. We serve an amazing God. We serve a great God. Amen. And he inhabits the praises of his people. Hallelujah. Well, give him a shout of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, before you see, I want you to greet one another and welcome them to Heritage of Faith and tell them how good it is to see them this morning. Hallelujah. Morning, Jessica. Hallelujah. Man. Hallelujah. God is so faithful. Amen. Amen. So you happy Thanksgiving? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for you. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I've been talking, we've been talking about this is the, the year of the breaking loose and, you know, in 2016 and things I've shared with you and, and you know, talking about God's desire to break loose on your behalf, God's desire to break loose in your life. You know, when we talked about Jesus and it said that when the, le- the, the man with leprosy came to Jesus and, and he said, I know that you're, I know that you're, you're willing and I know, I, I know that you can do something, but I don't know if you will. And, and Jesus said, when did the same thing? He says, I will. Right. And what do we translate that as? It's what he likes to do. Yeah. Amen. It's what he likes to do. And well, we're going to continue on that next week and may, may touch some stuff this morning. But, but I had it in my heart this morning by the Holy Spirit to talk about Thanksgiving. To, to talk about Thanksgiving. Amen. You know, we, we, live in a, we live in a society where, where Thanksgiving is, it, being thankful is, is hard to come by. Yeah. You know, we, we live in a, in a society where it's kind of like, you owe me. You know, you, you, you owe me. You, you know, I'm, I'm entitled to what you've done, what you're doing for me. I'm entitled I'm entitled for what you, what you did for me. It's almost like it, even when it's your birthday, it, you, know, you know, people are entitled to give you a birthday present. You know, it, it's like you're, you feel entitled that, that everyone, you know, and, and that's just the way society is. You, you owe me something. Now, I, listen, I want you to turn to two places, and uh, one is 2 Timothy chapter 3 and Romans chapter 1. And we're going we're gonna to get into this morning. While, while you're turning there, just want to remind all the men, on December 5th, we've got a men's breakfast. And, uh, you know, biscuits and gravy, eggs, all sorts of stuff. But also we have, a, we have a gentleman by the name of Van Crouch, and he used to be the chaplain for the Chicago Bears. I'm telling you, this man is hilarious. And, but I'm telling you, he's going he's gonna to deposit the word of God into your life. So, so if you're a man here this morning you haven't, and you haven't signed up yet, make sure you sign up in the lobby before you leave. We need to know how many people to be expecting. We're not charging for, for the, the breakfast, but we will receive an offering to offset the cost for that. But, but we want you to invite somebody with you. Bring somebody. I'm telling you, your life will be changed by it. And that's December 5th. And also, uh, uh, Van Crouch will be with us Sunday morning as well. So I'm telling you, it'll be an awesome time that weekend. So did you find Second Timothy? Hallelujah. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. It says, But understand this, that in the last days will come set in perilous times of great stress and trouble, hard to deal with and hard to bear. For people will be lovers of self, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, and unholy. Now think about that. In the last days, there will be perilous times will come. And it's giving us a descri- description of really what is, what is, what is, what does man and woman look like on the face of the earth in these last days, in these times of great stress and time of great trouble? How many people can, can agree this is like a description of what we're living in now? Times of great stress and times of great trouble. 
But not only does it tell us what the times will be like, but it also tells us what the people will be like. It says they'll be lovers of self. It says that they'll be unthankful. Unthankful. Now let's go to Romans chapter, Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verse 20. It says, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful. Now listen to that. Because that when they knew God, they didn't glorify him as God. Neither were they thankful. But they became vain in their imaginations and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And changing the glory of the uncorruptible God into the image made like of a corruptible man into images, four-footed beasts and creeping things. Meaning what they do is they created things to worship. Wherefore God also gave them up to the uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. For this cause, now because of this, God had to give them up to their own affections, for even their women did change their natural use into one that's against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lusts one towards another, men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error. No, so it's talking about this is the stage of the world, but how did the world get to the place where it, where it is? It stems back from people didn't, they recognized him as God, but they didn't worship him as God, nor were they thankful. What did 2 Timothy, I know it sounds kind of heavy right now, but we're going somewhere. 2 Timothy 3 said in the last days, it would be perilous times, but what will be one of the characteristics of the people? They'll be unthankful. Now, there's some statements I want to read here at the beginning because I, I really want to deposit this in our hearts because, because I'm telling you, thankfulness is a key to a successful life. Right. Now, listen to this. When a society, and these are what these scriptures, and this is what the Holy Spirit told me to write down. It says, when a society is no longer thankful, they become a society that not only doesn't honor God, but they don't honor each other. thankful what happens is you start losing respect and honor and it begins with God that's where it starts and then it goes to other people see what we're seeing in the world today is a result of not being thankful I, I believe a huge sign and a huge thing that human deals with and a lot of a lot of things that man that we we can deal with on a, on, a, on a daily basis I believe stems from really a heart of unthankfulness What is thankfulness? What is thanksgiving? It's an act of expressed appreciation. It's an act of worship. It's an attitude of the heart. This morning, I want us to cultivate a life, a heart, and an attitude of thanksgiving. Thanks, thanksgiving goes beyond just saying the words, thank you. And I say that because, because if, you, if, if thank you has to be forced, then are you really thankful? And thankfulness is something that comes out of the inside of your heart. Now listen, thanksgiving is a heart response from someone that is that is overwhelmed by the goodness and the graciousness of someone's word, act, or presence. Let me say it again. Thanks, thanksgiving or thankfulness is a heart response from someone that is overwhelmed by the goodness and the graciousness of someone's word, act, or presence. I believe that thanksgiving and thankfulness is a key that unlocks extraordinary things in our lives. Now, as I got looking at this word, thank you, thanksgiving or thankfulness and i was looking this up in in in, in the greek language in the way that the new testament is written and and the word is eucharisto 
And the root, and the root word is interesting. When you understand this word or define this word in the Greek, it, listen, listen, listen to this. It means to be mindful of favor. To be mindful of favor. When you are thankful, what are you, what are you doing? You are mindful of someone's favor they poured out on you. When you're thankful, what are you doing? Uh, you're remembering what that person did. When you say thankful, to, thank you to someone, what am I saying? I'm saying, Kenny, I'm mindful that you favored me. I'm mindful that you favored me. Thanksgiving. It's, it's being mindful of favors that have, that have taken place in your life. I believe really a a root cause of depression begins. Depression begins with an unthankful heart. Now that that may be, I'm talking about that's where it begins. I believe depression sets in in someone's life because, because they forget and don't know what to be thankful for. And that's where it begins and the enemy takes it other places. Thankfulness. Are you mindful of his favor on your life this morning? So when you, you're thanking him, what are you doing? I'm mindful of his favor on my life. Go back to that one definition. It's a heart response from someone that is overwhelmed by the goodness and the graciousness of someone's word, act, or presence. Being thankful is thinking on the goodness of God in the midst of whatever season of life you're in. Being thankful is thinking on the goodness of God no matter what season you might find yourself in. Whether everything's going great, where everything's going bad, it doesn't matter. Being thankful is about focusing on His goodness no matter what season you might be in. Too often it's easy to focus our intention, or our, our, all of our attention on past failures. It's easy to focus on where we missed it. It's easy to focus on what other people did to us. It's easy to focus on, on things that didn't go the way we maybe thought they should have gone. Come on. It's easy to focus on that. But we have to focus on the good, even in the midst of what you might be going through. Even being able to lift a hand to God and say, God, I don't understand what I'm going through right now, but Father, I thank you for your goodness. I'm mindful of you in the midst of what I'm going through and what I'm facing right now. See, when all you do is focus on past experiences, past failures, if all you do is focus on present negative situations, what happens, it will hinder your present attitude. If all you do is focus on, on negative situations and negative circumstances, what it's going to do is going to affect your present attitude. And see, your attitude, they, they say it this way, your attitude has everything to do with your altitude. Meaning, meaning your attitude has everything to do with how high you can go and how far you can go. And so if I, all I'm doing is focusing on negative situations, negative certain circumstances, if all I'm doing is focusing on that, what am I doing? It's affecting my attitude, and my attitude will keep me from the altitude that God wants me to go. But when I thank Him, when I have a life of thanksgiving, when I have an attitude of thanksgiving, when I have a heart of thanksgiving, when I have a life of thanksgiving, what does thanksgiving do? It's changing my attitude. It's affecting my attitude. So what are you thinking about today? What are you thinking about tomorrow? What are you going to be thinking about? Because whatever you're thinking about is going to take you to your next destination in life. But I'm telling you, we need to, have, we need to cultivate a life and a heart of thanksgiving. Ready to get in this this morning? Let's go, to, let's go to Psalms chapter 100. Psalms 100. So thanksgiving goes beyond just saying the words, thank you. Hallelujah. And as we see this morning, I'm telling you, you're going to see thanksgiving in a whole new light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before we read it, just just start thanking God for being mindful of his favor in your life. Thank him. Oh, Father, thank you. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. Thank you for restoration. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, the time that you came through. 
financially. We thank you, Lord, for the promotion that you brought at that time in my life. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thanksgiving and being thankful goes beyond just saying thank you. But what is, what is thanksgiving? You can open your eyes. Hallelujah. Psalms 100, verse 1. Now listen, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Now, now, like I said, it's more than thanksgiving is more than just saying thank you. It's an attitude. That's right. It's a position of the heart. And here it says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. See, I say thanksgiving is, th being thankful is more than just saying thank you because, because you need to understand that thanksgiving is your key to his presence. Thanksgiving is your access to his presence. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and come into his courts with praise. I enter his gates with thanksgiving. See, when you come to God, you enter with thanksgiving. Don't come to God complaining. Don't come to God talking about how things aren't working and how things aren't changing. Go to God, enter his gates with thanksgiving and come into his courts with praise. I'm telling you, when you start thanking him, I'm telling you, he manifests. When you start thanking him, all of a sudden he gets bigger on the inside of you. When you start thanking him, it gives him room into the room. When you start thanking him, it gives him room on the inside of you. When you start thanking him, it gives him room up in your mind and in your thinking. Because all of a sudden, as you're thanking him, all of a sudden, those other things, the negative things, those things are becoming smaller, but yet he's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Why? Because you are thanking him. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and come into his courts with praise. If you look at the top of this psalm in my Bible, it says a psalm of praise. And there's a, there's a little letter there. It says F. If I take that down to the bottom of my Bible, it says thanksgiving. It's a psalm of thanksgiving. So when we talk about praise, it's not just shouting loud. It's not, it's not just the fast songs during church. But I'm telling you, it is thanksgiving. Because thanksgiving is, is God's call. It's, it, is, it is your key, so to speak. It's, it's like the key into your house or your garage door opener. You hit, that, you hit that garage door opener also, and what you have access into the garage. It's the same thing when you, when you come to God and you start thanking Him. What is your, you're getting access into His presence. Enter His gates with thanksgiving, and you come into His courts with praise. Hallelujah. Thanksgiving. I'm telling you, it is a key to cause his presence to show up in your life. Hallelujah. Start thanking him again. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your presence in, this, in our lives. We thank you, Father. The psalmist in Psalm 34 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. What? His praise, his thanksgiving shall be continually in my mouth. Hallelujah. 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 Remember in Romans 1, it said, it said they knew him as God, but they didn't recognize him as God, and they didn't give him thanks. Right. So you need to recognize him every day of your life. If you don't recognize him as Lord, you'll recognize something else as Lord. Right. Hallelujah. If, you're, if, you're, if you spend more time meditating on your negative situation, you just made that negative situation Lord. If, if, you're, if you're meditating more on, on, your, on your past failure, what would what, you just do? You made your past failure, Lord. But when you start thanking him and you start praising him, what are you doing? You're making him Lord of your situation. You're making him Lord of your life. Because I tell you, eventually, like we saw the progression in Romans, when you let go of thankfulness, eventually you will be a God to yourself. I mean, thankfulness puts God at the center of your life. And it puts God at the center of your situation. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. It's beyond just saying thank you. But I'm telling you, thanksgiving is access to his presence. Not only is it access to his presence, but thanksgiving is a key to your prayer life. Let's go to Philippians chapter 4. 
Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Thank you, Father. King James says, be careful for nothing. Amplified says, do not fret or have anxiety about anything. Remember, what are you going to think about? The negative situation? Or are you going to think about God? Here it says, don't fret or have anxiety about anything. That's right. That's so good. Anything. Come on. Anything. Come on. What, what, what pressures are you facing right now? What, what are you being overcome by right now? Here it says, don't have anxiety about anything. And he didn't say, now it, it's okay to have this or it's okay. No, he said nothing. Right. Don't be anxious about anything. Look to your neighbor and say, Nothing. Look to your other side. I'm not supposed to be anxious. Look back to the other side about anything. <laughs> I hear you. Nothing. Don't be anxious about anything. See, sometimes we like to allow allowances in Scripture. Well, you know, it's okay. No, th this is okay. It's okay because it's a really bad situation. Nothing. Nothing. Well, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a mom. I'm supposed to worry. About anything. My child just got their driver's license. About anything. I say that now because my son's 10. <laughs> yeah. Be anxious about nothing. <laughs> well, it's okay, Pastor Jesse, because you know my, my finances, I'm struggling my, about nothing. See, maybe your anxiety is keeping God from manifesting. Maybe you're giving the enemy more room than you're giving God room. Be anxious for nothing. What if I really gave, I, I don't know if I can really give my life over to God because what, what would I be giving up? Anxiety. What if I really step out and become obedient and do what God's calling me to do? I, I can't do that. I, I, I couldn't do that, Pastor Just Fear. Do not fret or have anxiety about anything. But in everything. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. But in everything, by prayer, with thanksgiving. Prayer. Prayer. Thank you, Father. We enter his gates with thanksgiving. And you come into his courts with praise. Anytime you pray, start off with thanksgiving. Amen. With prayer, prayer with thanksgiving. Why is thanksgiving such a, such a key in our prayer life? Remember, it's mindful of his favor, That's right. his favors. That's right. When you go to God and say, and, and, and deal with a certain situation, say maybe it has to do with your children. Father, right now, I bring, I, we bring our children before you right now. And I thank you for manifesting yourself in their life. I thank you that you are faithful. Father, I thank you that you have a covenant, Father, for my children. Our inheritance is our children's children. So, Father, I thank you, Lord. So what are you doing? You, you aren't just asking for something. You're not just demanding something, but, but not only you, you, you're asking for something, but you're releasing your faith and his ability. You're releasing and knowing that he's mindful to do something. Remember, enter his gates with thanksgiving and come into his courts with praise. Why? Because the Lord is good. 
See, what was he doing? He was mindful of, of God's favor. He's good. That's why I can enter into God's presence. The psalmist could say that. Why? Because he's good. He was mindful of who God is and, and, and what God was in his life. Don't fret or have anxiety about anything but in everything. In prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Make your requests made known unto God. In what? In the God of peace. In the God of peace. In the God of peace. See, the end of your... When you finish praying, in all reality, you should sense peace. If you don't sense pre peace when you, when, when you prayed, maybe you're not finished yet. Or maybe you didn't enter into Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is, is a key in our prayer life. Why, why, is, why is Thanksgiving such a key in our prayer life? And why is it, why is it so vital that the, that the Apostle Paul wanted us to say, now make sure when you pray, it's with Thanksgiving. Why was that so important for us, for us to understand and us to get a hold of. Because thanksgiving is the way and means we release our faith. It's the way and means we release our faith. You know, I heard Dr. Savell say many years ago that worship is the highest form of faith. Thanksgiving and praise and worship, it's the highest form of faith. Why? Because you're releasing your, your confession, you're releasing your, your life into someone's hands you can't see. And I've gone through situations in my life that if, if people in the world saw me, they thought I'd be nuts. They thought I would be nuts what I would do at home, praising God, confessing the scriptures, praising God, thanking God, dancing, spinning around, whatever it might be. The world might think I'm crazy, but you know what? My faith is released in him. So when you, you are thankful... For God, You're, you enter into thanksgiving. What are you doing? You're releasing your faith and his power and his wisdom and his goodness. Amen. Let's go to John chapter 6. Why we pray with thanksgiving is because it's a way and means we release our faith. John chapter 6, verse 5. It says, When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and he saw a great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. He knew what he would do. He knew what he would do. What, what, what are you going to do when you don't know what to do? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. As a pastor, uh, my desire is to train you so you know what to do. So you know what to do when you encounter lack in your life, difficulty in your life, situations in your life. See, everyone was coming to Jesus and said, where are we going to buy bread that these may eat? This he said, this to prove him, that prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 pennies worth of bread is not, not enough for them that every one of them may take a little. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fish. But what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make, them, make the men sit down. Remember, he knew what he, he would do. He knew what he would do. And Jesus said, make the men to sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men that sat down in a number, about 5,000 people. Wow, that's a, lot, that's a lot of mouths to feed. How many of you believe there, there's, there needs to be some breaking loose taking place? <laughs> you know, and it, it, didn't say, it, didn't say, it didn't say two whales. It said two small fish. It says small, porquito, small. Oh, 
Like my Espanol porquito. <laughs> now listen, and Jesus took the loaves. And Jesus took the loaves. He took the loaves. He, he took the lack. He, he took the little bit. See, the disciples were anxious about everything that was going on. Remember, be anxious for nothing but in everything in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. You see, the disciples were anxious about where are we going to get food to feed so many? Where are we going to get this? We only have 200 pennies. And what is this? And we have five loaves and two fish, two small fish, but what is this among so many? But yet Jesus took the little. And when he had what? Given thanks. When he had given thanks. So what was I? I just see this, this picture of Jesus. He, he has these five loaves. And, and, and I see him taking those loaves and lifting up to the Father and saying, Father, I thank you. See, because Jesus knew that, that thanksgiving brings God on the scene. Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving brings, brings his strength. Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, he was being what mindful of what God could do. He was being mindful of what, what God would do. He was mindful of God in this particular situation. So what did Jesus, he lifted up the loaves and what did he do? He gave thanks. See, too often we get our eyes on our little. We too get, we get our eyes on, on what's not working. We get our eyes on, on natural things. We get our eyes on so many different things instead of our eyes on Him and being mindful of His favor, being mindful of His ability, being mindful of what He can do. See, thanksgiving, when you, when you are thankful, what was Jesus doing? Jesus was releasing His faith in the Father to do the impossible. Thank you, Father. I, I don't know what little you might have this morning. You know what your little is. You know what, what your weaknesses are. You, you know those things. And, and, and just, just for, for the sake of illustration and for the sake of, of releasing our faith, take, take your little that you might have in your ri- life right now and put it in your hands. Absolutely. Go ahead. Take, put your hands out. Call, call what your little is. What, 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 what is that in, in your what, what is that in your life right now? Is it a situation with your marriage? Is it is it a job situation? Is it finances? Is it is it your calling? Is it your purpose? What, whatever it is, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, put that in God's hands. Believe in God for for, for the right spouse. Believe in God for your children. Now take that and lift it up to heaven and say, Father, thank you. I give this to you. I give my little to you. I give my disappointments to you. I give my failures to you. In Jesus' name. Did you feel his presence in this place? Being thankful. Let's go to John 11. Another situation with Jesus. I mean, let me make sure I can finish there. Thank you, Father. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fish as much as they would. And they were all filled. He said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with fragments of the five barley loaves which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Man, God multiplied. Five loaves and two fish and when it all said and done there was twelve baskets left over. One for each disciple. Hallelujah. 
I'm glad it was probably when the fish left over because that would have smelled bad after a while. <laughs> Thank you, Father. I th think about, yeah. I just saw something and I said, well, we'll go on and I just saw something. And I think about when Jesus, in the same chapter, I believe it is in John chapter 6, when Jesus is, is with his disciples and, and he talks about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. And what, what did he do? He, he lifted up the bread and he blessed it. And he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body broken for you. And then he went in, I think it's John 6, uh, 51, 52, 53, somewhere in there. He said that my bread is to bring life to the world. And yet there was 12 baskets left over. And he sent the disciples out and said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. This is just a rabbit trail. I'm, but think about that. He said, I am that bread that came down to give life to the world. And yet he told his disciples, he, I'm broken. Gave enough to the disciples for the world. Yes, that's right. Hallelujah. All because of thanksgiving. Yes. 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 Let's go to John chapter 11. I think I need to dig there a little deeper sometime. Hallelujah. Yes. John chapter 11. Remember prayer, thanksgiving is a key to enter his gates into his presence. I mean thanksgiving is a key to enter in his gates. Pray, thanksgiving is a key in our prayer life. We just saw Jesus in John chapter 6. Now look at John chapter 6, verse 38. Jesus, therefore, again groaning in himself, come into the grave. It was a cave and a stone laid upon it. And Jesus said, take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto the Lord, by this time he stinks, for he had been dead four days. And Jesus said unto her, said not unto thee that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the from, uh, took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and he said, "Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I thank you." What he the open the, the the tomb was there. They said, "Roll the stone away." And what did he do? Father, I thank you that you hear me. I thank you. That you hear me. And I love the next verse. And I know that you hear me always. Thanksgiving was a key that raised the dead. I thank you that you always hear me. Thanksgiving is a key in your prayer life. It's a, it's a key in your life. It's not just a holiday. It's, it's not just saying thank you. It is, it, is, it is an overflow of your heart and being mindful of, of God in your life. God in your situation. Hallelujah. So now when you say, Father God, thank you. What are you saying? Father, I'm mindful of your favor. I'm mindful of your ability in this situation. Thank you, Father. Let's go to Romans 4. Remember, Thanksgiving is a key in which you release your faith. Romans 4. Romans 4. Verse 20, I'm going to read the Amplified. It says, No unbelief or distrust made him waver concerning the promises of God, but he grew strong and was empowered by faith as he gave praise and glory to God. Remember, thanksgiving is a key in which you release your faith. No unbelief or distrust made him waver concerning the promises of God. But what who? Abraham grew strong and was empowered by what? Faith as what? He gave praise and glory to God. So Abraham, it's, you know, because it even said even hope being gone, he hoped in faith. Even when he considered the deadness of his own body or the deadness of his wife's womb and this promise that God said they would have a child... And he would be the father of many nations. And, and he's holding on to this thing, but he's, never see, he's not seeing the fulfillment of it. But what does he do just to see the fulfillment of it? He gave praise and glory to God. What encouraged his faith? Thanksgiving, praise, giving glory to God. It said, no unbelief or distrust made him waver 
concerning the promise of God. What was the promise of God? That he would be the father of many nations. But he grew strong and was empowered by faith as he gave praise and glory to God. Thanksgiving strengthens your faith. Why? Because you're meditating on him and not on your situation. Fully satisfied and assured that God was able and mighty to keep his word and to do what he had promised. Hallelujah. Thanksgiving is the way and means of releasing your faith. And when I think about this story, I think about my mom. And some of you might have heard me tell this story before. But I guess 22 years ago, 23 years ago now, you know, my mom had prayed for me for a long time, wanting me to have an experience with God. You know, I was, I was working at a liquor store. I was, I was uh, 20 years of age. I dropped out of college. I couldn't go in the military because of health conditions. And some of you heard my story about, you know, about my physical things with breath, having breathing issues and, and being on oxygen and all those types of things. And, and I have time to tell that. But, but understand, my mom was crying out to God for me. My, my mom had a promise for her household. She had a promise for her family. She had, she had a promise that she was standing on. And, 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 and she, as she would stand on, on those promises, you know, she would pray for me every day. She, she would sow seed for me. She would, she, would, she would try to get me to go to meetings. She would try to get me to come hear certain people preach, just hoping one time, one day, you know, my life would be saved and that, that I would turn my life over to God because she knew that was something important for me to do. But yet nothing was happening. And, and it seemed the more she prayed, the worse I got. And it was in July of 1992. It was six months before, before I had that experience with God. And, and, and she, so she was in prayer one day and, and the Holy Spirit really, really came to her and just got all over her and said, stop asking me to touch his life. Stop praying about your son's life. Stop praying for me to save your son. That is a promise that I've given to you already. You don't need to ask for it. It's a promise you have to receive. Another thing the, the Lord said, I don't want you to ask another time for me to save Justin. I want you to thank me that I have saved Justin. Don't, don't, don't beg God. Just to thank God. He hears you. Be thankful. And every time after that, every day, she'd say, Father, I thank you. And she would start just rejoicing. She'd start just rejoicing and praising God for, for me being changed. It didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen one month, two months. But she started seeing things. And I, I, can, I can even vouch for it because, because all of a sudden, I'm, I, I'd be high or I'd be... I'd be a, I, now listen to this. Now, now listen to this. This is, this is during that time. Now this was a month later. This was August. So this was when a month later. I was sitting with my friends. My parents went to a church about an hour away where my sister lived. And so they'd be gone Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And they'd come back late Sunday night after Sunday night service. And so you know what that meant for me? Party. <laughs> but that was a Saturday night about 2 in the morning... And I'm sitting with all my, all, all my close friends. And these are friends that I had from a, from a, from a young, I mean, young, I mean, young kid. I mean, baseball together, school together, everything. Really close with him. We're sitting around smoking. <laughs> you know, and, and all, of a sudden, all of a sudden you get real, you know, <laughs> philosophical. I don't, can't say the word philosophical. <laughs> philosophical. <laughs> And all of a sudden you, you have this idea and these, these grand ideas about life and, and, and all these things. And, and, trying, you know, and, and so I, I'm sitting there and everyone's going around, what, what are you, you going to do? What are you going to do with your life? What are you going to do in the future? And it's going around from one person to another. And it gets to me and... <laughs> I'm going to be a preacher. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Some people know whether they should laugh at that or not. <laughs> but see, I could, something was happening on the inside of me. I, I would, I would, you know, what? two months later, I, I would, it was a Sunday afternoon, and I think it was October, and, and all of a sudden, I, I, I call, it's, it's the afternoon, and I am drunk. And I call, my, I call my family up at my sister's house, and I talk to all of them. And I start crying. I go to my brother-in-law. I'm like, Jay, I love you, man. I love you, Jay. I never talked to Jay on the phone. Something was happening. I don't know what it was. Something was happening. But in January 23rd of 1993, I had a visitation with God. It wasn't in the church. It was in my sister's, li- it was in my sister's living room. It marked my life forever. But see, something happens when you truly come into a place of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. It's not just saying thank you, God, but it's a a heart overwhelmed with God's, with just a gratitude of what God has already done. I'm going to close with two scriptures. You can turn to two places. Go to Psalms 116 and Hebrews 13. We'll go to Psalm 16 first. Psalms 116. So I want to say, don't give up on your son. Don't give up on your children. Because really, if you give up on your son or your daughter, you've given up on God. Hallelujah. Thanksgiving. Verse 17. says, I will offer the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And will call upon the name of the Lord. Sometimes thanksgiving is a sacrifice. Sometimes I didn't want to, I wasn't feeling like thanking God for anything. The way my situations looked, the way my life looked at the moment, I I didn't want to thank God for anything. You know what, thanksgiving is a sacrifice. It's what worship and praise is. It's something that sometimes you don't feel like coming in here and lifting your hands or, or, or singing or even getting out of bed in the morning to, on a Sunday morning. It's a sacrifice to say, God, I choose to be mindful of you in the midst of where I am. I choose to be mindful of you in the midst of this. It's a sacrifice. I will offer to thee the sacrifices of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem, praise ye the Lord. You don't need to turn there, but you can also, if you're taking notes, Mark uh, Psalms 107, verses 21 through 23. It's another aspect of sacrifice of thanksgiving. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews 13. Verses 14. It says, For here we have no permanent city. Thank you, Father. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. By him, therefore, by who? Jesus. By him, Jesus, therefore, let us offer the sacrifices of praise to God continually. Continually, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Amplified says, for here we have no permanent city, but we're looking for the one which is to come. Through him, therefore, let us constantly and all times offer up to God a sacrifice of praise. Now listen, this, which is the fruit of the lips that thankfully acknowledge and confess and glorify his name. Let us constantly and at all times offer up to God a sacrifice of praise. 
then in the Amplified describes what a sacrifice of praise is. It's thankfully acknowledging, confessing, and glorifying his name. See, sometimes you need to just start acknowledging and confessing and glorifying his name in the midst of where you are. Verse 14, again, it says that we have no permanent city, but we're looking for one. Meaning, meaning they haven't arrived yet. But, but you know what? That because they haven't arrived yet, you know why they're waiting to arrive? The permanent city they're looking for is heaven. And you know what they're going to do until they get to heaven? Continually, at all times, offer up to God sacrifices of praise. Which is continuing to thank him and acknowledge him and confess him and glorify his name. Meaning until Jesus returns or until we get to heaven, our life should continually be marked by constantly giving up sacrifices of thanking him and praising his name. Thanksgiving. It's a key in our lives. You may have had the worst day in the world, but I'm telling you, you need to thank him. Your marriage may feel like it's falling apart and your children are far from God, but I'm telling you, you need to be thankful. You have to make the choice that I will come to God with thanksgiving. I'll choose to thank him and choose to bring the sacrifice of thanksgiving. I choose to thank him. And when I choose to thank him, I'm releasing my faith and his power and his ability into my life. So I close with this. Harvard Business School did a, did a case study and research, and they proved that feelings of gratitude are a key to living a healthy, happy, and a successful life. Harvard. This is what, this is what they, their research proved. That a life of gratitude and to be thankful daily was a key to living a happy, healthy, and a successful life. Now think if, if in a natural aspect of being thankful, how much more the spiritual aspect. Thankfulness opens the door to spiritual aspects of your life. How much more in the natural. Thankfulness will attract people to you, bonuses to you, and put you in the right place. Now another thing about thankfulness is people don't want to be around ungrateful, unthankful people. Maybe people don't want to be around you. What's coming out of your mouth? People don't want to be around unthankful people. I'll close with this paragraph. Gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos into order, confusion into clarity. It can turn a meal into a feast, a house into a home, a stranger into a friend. Gratitude makes sense out of our past. It brings peace for today and creates a vision for tomorrow. Be thankful. Because it invites God on the scene. It's a key to your prayer life. And it releases your faith in his power, goodness, and wisdom. Thank you, Father. Everybody stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you this morning. We are thankful for you. We're thankful for you. As we go about this Thanksgiving holiday, I hope you saw Thanksgiving a little bit different this morning. Be mindful of his favor in your life. When you're sitting around the table this week or Maybe you might don't have family in this area. Whatever it is, take the time to be mindful of God on their behalf. Be mindful of God on their behalf. Welcome God into every situation in your life. Just take from just a couple moments and just be thankful. Father, we thank you. Get your mind off your problem. Get your mind off where you're at and just be thankful. Father, we choose to thank you this morning. We choose to give you access into our lives. We choose to embrace you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. If you need healing in your body, just lift your hands and just start thanking him for that healing. Don't ask for it, just thank him for it. You're needing, desiring a loved one to come home. 
Just lift your hands and start thanking him. You made mistakes and failures and gone the wrong direction and feel like you've made a mess of your life. Just lift your hands and start thanking him for him restoring you on the right road. See, it's not my thanksgiving to him that releases power in your life. It's your thanksgiving to him that releases his power in your life. Choose. Thanksgiving is a choice. It's a choice. It's a choice to make in the midst of wherever you are, in whatever season of life you might in, be in. It's a choice to be thankful. Thank you, Father. Thank you for healings in this place this morning. Thank you for restoration in this place this morning. Thank you for loved ones coming home. Thank you, Father, for restoring callings. Thank you, Lord, for restoring marriages. Yeah, if you're having issues in your marriage, just take your spouse's hand and lift it up to heaven and just start thanking him. Thanking him. Thanking him. Oh, hallelujah. Start thanking him. Hallelujah. Just start thanking him. Start thanking him. Hallelujah. Start thanking him. Be thankful where you are. Be thankful for what you have, no matter what it might be like. You might be like, I wish I had a better car. I wish I had a better house. Just start thanking him for what you have now. Start thanking him for what you have now. Every time you get in that car, thank him for the car that you have. Yeah, you might not like it. It might break down from time to time, but start thanking him. Start thanking him. Thanking him. Every time you pull up in the driveway or pull into your apartment complex, start thanking him. You might be in an apartment. You're like, oh, we really want a house. We really want a house. We really need a house. Start thanking him for, for, that, for that apartment. Don't, don't every time you walk in or drive in, oh, I can't stand this apartment. I can't stand this place to live. I can't stand living here. I don't like this neighborhood. I want to live somewhere. Start thanking him. Start thanking him for what you have. Start thanking him for what you have. Hallelujah. Start thanking him for your children. Start thanking him for the spouse, even though they might not treat you the way that they should. Start thanking them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, you might not like your boss, but start thanking God for your boss. Start thanking him for your, start thanking God for your boss. There might be people you work with that, that you don't get along with, you don't like being around, but start thanking God for them. They're, they're God's sons and daughters. God has a plan for their life. God has a purpose for the, your, their life. Hallelujah, start being thankful for the people that you're around. Start being thankful for everything that you have. Be thankful, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, we praise you, Father. We glorify you, Lord. We're thankful for you, Lord. We're thankful, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise you, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're thankful for you, Lord. Hallelujah. We're thankful for you. Oh, we praise you, Father. We praise you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. 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 And you're like, Pastor, I don't have... It's hard for me to find something to be thankful for. Let me ask you a question. Are you born again this morning? Let me read a scripture to you as I close here. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Now listen to this. Verse 14. It says, And they yearn for you while they pray for you because of the surpassing measure of God's grace, His favor and mercy and spiritual blessing which is shown forth in you. Now thanks be to God for his gift, precious beyond telling, his indescribable, his inexpressible free gift. The King James says, for by their prayer for you, which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you, the exceeding grace of God in you, thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. I'm telling you, have you are you born again this morning? Do you know what? Then you have received an unspeakable gift. 
You've received a precious gift that's beyond telling. It's indescribable, it's inexpressible, free gift. See, we have something to be thankful for this morning. And if you're here this morning and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I want you to know there is an indescribable, there is a precious gift for you. Hallelujah. If you're here this morning, you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, to this morning is a time to lift up your hands and receive that gift. Because the Bible calls it a precious gift. It's indescribable. It's inexpressible. You know what? And it's free. Hallelujah. Everyone just lift your hand to heaven. Lift your hand to heaven and start thanking Him for that free gift of grace. That gift of grace. If you're here this morning, you're watching by way of internet and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life or you've, or you've been far away from God and you're ready to come back with God right now, just lift your hands like a funnel and just say, Father, I thank you for sending Jesus for my life. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me, making all things new. I receive this free gift right now. I thank you for this gift. I'm mindful of the favor. I'm mindful of Jesus, that he saved me from all my sins. I'm thankful this morning for the Holy Spirit that has been sent to empower my life to equip my life for the days ahead. I thank you, Lord, for filling me with this grace that's indescribable. I receive it now in Jesus' name. Give me a shout of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You can be seated for just a moment. Glory to God. God is so good, amen. Hallelujah. It's so fun. Gratitude, an attitude of gratitude. You know, there's no difference uh, where that is, and Pastor Justin hit on this today, is just, you know, what we sow, what we give, we're going to receive the tithes and the offerings this morning. But, you know, that aspect of where you are right now isn't, isn't where God wants to leave you in any area of your life. And it's an attitude of gratitude for the things that you do have right now in your life. You know, the, the thing I, I think I enjoy most about the tithe is that it doesn't matter if you make a million dollars or a hundred dollars or ten dollars. It's still ten percent. So he's not asking any more from me than he is from you, David. You know, it's, but, but my thankfulness, my gratefulness for what I do have, what I, you can't give more than what you have, but my gratefulness for what I do have. Now, you can have a vision and you can have faith for the more, but the reality of it is you've got something. You've got something to give. And your attitude of gratitude for what you do have and taking it before the Lord. It says in Deuteronomy chapter 26, when you bring the tithes and the offering, you come and you worship the Lord. That's what Pastor Justin was talking to us this morning about. You just bring what you do have and you're thankful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, that I've got something to give back to you for all that you've given to me. And you come with that attitude of gratitude for what God's given you. And you get excited about it. Woo! Because where you are is not where you're going to stay, amen? amen? You know, what do you do between amen and there it is? Thank God. Praise the Lord. You get excited. You get joyful about what you do have. You stay excited about what you do have. And your, your breakthrough's right around the corner. Your breakthrough's right around the corner. And you keep that because Dr. Savelle has said this over and over again. When you're at your worst, I can guarantee you Satan is just taking his best shot. And if you'll hang on to what you have in God, the promise that you have in God, and you remain thankful, you remain joyful in your circumstances, you're going to get through that breakthrough immediately. Amen. amen. It's right around the corner. And you and I got to keep that up. Amen. We got to stir ourselves up continuously. Amen. Don't get weary in well-doing, for in due season we are going to reap that harvest. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. Amen? It's exciting. Amen? 
If you have your tithes or your offerings, if you're giving by way of internet, uh, there's a give button right underneath the screen if you're watching live this morning. If you're on our if you're on YouTube, you can go to heritageoffaith.com and there'll be some giving instructions for you. We're in agreement with you just as much as we are with everyone inside of this room here this morning. There's no distance in the spirit realm, amen? amen. And we're also thankful for our other uh, members that went out to minister this morning. They are just as much a part of us. They're going to be watching this later on to be in this service with us. And we're going to pray this together. We're going to pray this by faith, amen? amen. So let's pray over our tithes and our offers. Say, thank you, Father. For giving me something to give back to you. I give joyfully, cheerfully, because you're a good God, and you've given this to me. Thank you, Father, from the bottom of my heart. I sow this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's receive the tithes and the offerings. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, praise God. Are you excited about this week? It's a great time to be thankful. Keep your thankfulness up all week. One of the things, you don't need to be thankful for this, but we're not having service Wednesday night, so you should be thankful for that. But we want you to be thankful wherever you're going over these holiday seasons, okay? We plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of you. Some of you will be traveling. We, we plead the blood. We don't stop praying for you just because you're not here. Amen. We're going to be praying over you, and, and uh, you, we know the blood of Jesus is going to protect you wherever you go. You'll be blessed going where you're, where you're headed, and you're going to be blessed coming back. Amen? All right? So this, this Thursday, we will not have a service here, and so enjoy the family time that you do have. Be thankful for the people that are around you. God has hooked you up with. Uh, we love you. We bless you. Um, there, uh, men's meeting, don't forget December the 5th. Van Crouch, you will leave here changed, transformed by the anointing that's on his life because it'll be funny and you'll laugh your way into your next destiny. Amen? He, you will laugh your way. He will make you laugh. Men, don't forget that on that Saturday morning. And then, of course, he's going to be here with us at the church. Uh, don't forget, people, this is a great time during our Thanksgiving time as we're thankful for what we do have. But there may be somebody in our church or someone that you're close to that you know that may need something during these holiday seasons. We have our angel tree out there getting ready for Christmas that's right around the corner as well. So if you know of someone in our church or someone that you're really close to, Okay, we just don't let anybody just come, but we want to make sure we're making a contact with somebody and we're ministering to somebody. If there's somebody there that you would like for us to uh, reach out to as a body of believers, then you can sign them back up there in the back in the lobby. Uh, there'll be an angel tree signed up uh, form for them to sign up there. Dr. Savell will be doing a taping on December the 8th. If you're interested in being a part of that, they, these tapings will change your life. He ministers. You can draw the anointing out of him as he's up there, but it'll minister to you in a great way. December the 8th, and then you can go to social media at jsmi.org and register there, and they'll, be, they'll give you some instruction on what time to get there, and it's usually about 8.45, you need to be in your seat, so uh, that'll be a great time. Christmas Variety Show, we still have some spots left, I know there's some talented people in this audience, amen? The Christmas Variety Show, so during this Thanksgiving, a lot of you go shopping, so if you don't have the sweater, hello? The sweater that you want to wear for that variety show, this would be a great time to go get it. There'll be some great deals out there. Go get you a, you can make it ugly, you can make it pretty. You can, we're just going to have a, we're going to have some gifts and prizes for the coolest, funkiest, craziest, ugliest sweaters that we find during the variety show. So that could be you and you could get a prize for it. Wouldn't that be great? You may just go back in your old, old you know, storage unit and find out, find something, right? Here we go. Um, celebrate Christmas in Crowley on December the 19th uh, at the Crowley High School in the parking lot. They're going to be an awesome time of just uh, celebrating Christmas, celebrating Jesus in, in the parking lot over there. It's just going to be fun, activities. There's going to be uh, singing, caroling, and all kinds of things going on there. We're going to be a part of that as a church. There's going to be bounce houses and obstacle courses for the kids to get on. There's going to be uh, lots of foods and snacks, but it'll be a great time for us to shine Jesus as a community. This is a community event, not just a church event. Are there any first-time visitors? Right there. Praise God. Nice to have y'all this morning. We are looking forward to getting to know you better. As you go out the door, uh, you'll go right out the middle door, look to your right, and David will be back there, and he'll uh, have a gift for you. We want to sow something into you. Thank y'all for coming and being a blessing to us, and we pray that we've been a blessing to y'all as well. Anybody else I don't want to miss? I just make sure those caught my eye immediately. All right, well, let's stand up. Praise the Lord. We love you, and we're excited about what God is doing in your midst. Are you thankful this morning? Yeah.
Thank you, Jesus. Well, Father God, we bless you. We thank you for the wonderful time that we've been able to come in here and experience you together. We love you. We thank you for all that you're doing for us, all that you've done for us, and all the things that you're doing for us behind the scenes in ways that we don't even see right now. We are thankful to you, Lord, for your goodness and mercy that follows us all the days of our lives. Thank you for blessing us with your son, Jesus, and in his name we pray, amen. Have an awesome week, and we'll see you next Sunday.